So um, we are going to be dealing with some of the things that we just heard in the meditation. So if you were watching this recording, we listened to a meditation called Reframing Difficult Thoughts. Uh, and in this session, we're going to be focusing on trying to reframe some of our difficult or negative uh, thoughts. So that is kind of how we are going to frame things today. Um, if you came to this, uh, the guided reflection session I did in June, it's going to be very similar um, to that one, but we will, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just get into it. So I am going to ask uh, folks to set an intention, um, and this is uh, something that I do every once in a while in a meeting. So we had an ROI retreat this week, and I asked folks to um, to set an intention for that. Because reflection and reflective practice deals so much with your own personal intentions, um, I think it's really relevant for us here. So I am going to ask uh, you to take a moment um, and think about how you want to approach this session. Um, and I want you to set this intention and ideally you'll write it down. You're not, need, this isn't something you need to share um, with us, but you will write it down. Um, so, you know, thinking about the meditation we just did, I have an example here that says, in this session, I will be kind to myself. So that's the kind of thing I'm asking you to think about. And I'll give you a moment to think about that and set that intention. And then we will move forward. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move us forward. If you're still working on that intention, no worries. If you decide not to do one, that's also fine. Um, we are going to jump into our reflection here. And, and my email said this, but just as a reminder, you're going to want to have a place that you can do some writing, whether that's a notebook or an app or a Google Doc or Word Doc or whatever, uh, a tablet, whatever it is that you are, you know, that you find useful in terms of a space to write. Um, and we're actually gonna jump right into some totally open reflection time. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes. I'm actually gonna set a timer and I'm gonna ask you to free write about your work either this past semester or this whole year. Um, you can do this any way you want. You can draw, you can make a list. Um, you can scream, like do it as, I said scream, scream of consciousness. I guess you could do that too, just silently. Uh, stream of consciousness or raving or about something great that happened, ranting about something bad, just whatever it is um, that works for you. This is just sort of an open reflection time to let some stuff out. Um, so I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. If you are watching the recording, I am going to pause the recording during this time um, so that uh, you're not just watching five minutes of silence. Uh, and here we go. Five minutes, everyone. I am resuming the recording. Um, so uh, just to kind of ask, again, no one needs to share anything specific, um, but uh, I am wondering if anyone would like to share in the chat, is an open reflection exercise like this helpful for you? Does something like, here's five minutes, just go for it. Is that something that works for you or not? I'm curious. Um, so again, please feel free so we're, okay, great. Well, good. I'm seeing, I'm seeing positive thoughts in the chat. Um, came up with a method that was helpful, Rachel. I think that's um, that's really good too, especially when you have a structure like that where it's like, oh, you have five minutes. Um, you might you might need to come up with some sort of structure or method that works for you. Okay, well, that's our open reflection time, but things are about to get more structured. Um, so. I want to know as you're thinking about that last five minutes, um, and again, this can be something that you respond to in the chat or just think about yourself. I want you to think, were you more positive, more negative, or kind of somewhere in between those two? Um, 
when you were doing that sort of open reflection time. Again, I'll give you a moment to think and or share in the chat. Rachel, more positive. That's good. I like that. <laughs> You're shocked. Well, as we heard in the meditation, it's kind of part of a, a way that our brain protects us is to really remember the negative things, which we will talk more about. All right, so hearing, please, again, please don't be embarrassed to say negative. That's how brains are built to work, um, which isn't always a great thing for us. All right, so a mix, a mix of things. Um, I would say I was probably a little more negative in mind than positive. Uh, not all the way deep, dark negative, but getting to that end of the spectrum. So there's a reason for this. Um, and this is something that um, Chibs references in that meditation, um, but it is a, a cognitive bias called negativity bias. Uh, so this is um, from a company called Decision Lab. This is for me, one of the most clear sort of definitions of negativity bias. Um, it is a cognitive bias that results in adverse events having a more significant impact on our psychological state than positive events. Um, and as was mentioned in that um, meditation, part of this is sort of an evolutionary like way our brain remembers something bad so that we can protect ourselves from something bad happening in the future. Um, but what it often ends up meaning is that we just remember the bad or the negative things um, and we tend to downplay some of the positive stuff. Uh, we, there are hundreds of cognitive biases. Um, one I talk about a lot in my information literacy work is confirmation bias, um, but negativity bias is something that really does impact us, I think, on a day-to-day -day basis in a lot of ways. Um, I do want to take a moment here um, and say that the opposite of negativity bias is not toxic positivity. Toxic positivity, if you have read about that or heard of that, it is just this idea uh, that we are, um, you know, that we really have to focus only on the positive and that we really need to ignore the negative things. Um, and then if we are just sort of using that mindset, then good things will continue to happen. Um, and it was something, it's something that has gotten a lot of coverage, particularly during our current pandemic, um, people trying to sort of use that power of positive thinking a little over much um, to try to downplay some of the really devastating experiences that other people were having. So this is not a toxic positivity space. This is not a good vibes only space. Um, this is an all vibes welcome space. Um, but I do, I do want us to think a little bit about uh, the way that those sort of two opposite ends of the spectrum, negativity bias and then toxic positivity, that neither of those are really helpful or productive for us when we're thinking about reflection, um, that we, we really need to be moving somewhere in between those um, to be able to uh, reflect in a way that is productive for us uh, in terms of moving forward. So I do want you to take a moment in thinking about this negative uh, negativity bias to reflect on a time in the recent past when you've experienced this. So you can again, take a moment to think. Um, if you wanna share, you can. I have an example that I will share. So I will give my example in case anyone also wants to share in the chat. Um, I This happens to me a lot uh, related to teaching. Um, and I think that I talk to a lot of new teachers or people who are like our RLI interns who might be trying to teach for the first time um, or people who don't do a lot of training that are jumping into training. Uh, it is so easy to fixate on the negative stuff that happens. 
um, in a class or preparing for a class or after a class. And you also can kind of fall into that um, spiral of thinking where you're like, oh, if I had just de done this differently or said this differently, the whole thing would have worked out really well. So it's something that I, even though I like, I'm very aware of this and I coach other people to try to, you know, encourage them to avoid falling into that trap, I still do it myself. So there was a, a I think it's the last class I taught this semester. It was in mid-November and I just, you know, there was a, a, I tried to explain a concept um, to help students find the right, kind, the, the sources that they would need. Um, and that idea was that they probably weren't going to find sources that were really specific to their local community organization and trying to talk through that. But it just like it just wasn't getting through. So I just kept having students ask, why can't I find anything about UNCG Student Government Association in the Communication and Mass Media Complete Database? And so I, I knew that I wasn't explaining it well because it, I, it wasn't getting through, but I just couldn't. I couldn't figure out a different way to say it. Um, and that's really the main memory I have of that class, even though like a lot of fun and engaging things happened during the sessions. Um, so that's just, just one example from my recent past when I sort of fallen prey and experienced this negativity bias. So what we're gonna try to do I was going to say to combat this, but it's not really about combating it. It's about reframing it. Um, so we're going to use some positive questions in our reflection exercises today. Um, so these first three here are from um, a librarian who now works for a vendor or was writing on for a vendor on their blog. Um, uh, I pretty regularly search around to see what people are doing and saying related to reflective practice and librarianship or in libraries. Um, and this is one that came up uh, towards the, well, I found it at the beginning of 2022, um, but I think it was published at the end of last year. Um, and so these are three questions that I'm gonna give you some time to reflect on. Um, what did you learn professionally this year that you're proud of? What new things do you want to learn next year? And who would you like to collaborate or work with more next year? Um, so this is gonna be another time when I stop the recording and give you all about five minutes. You can try to reflect on all three of these. You can choose one that you really wanna focus on. Um, but if you'll, if you'll notice the way these questions are framed, they, they tend to be a little bit more positive about, in this particular case, about learning and about collaborating. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes again. I'm gonna turn my camera off, turn the recording off, and then we will come back together at the end of five minutes. And resume the recording and go on to our next set of questions. Now these are also from that same article by Williams. Um, and these are two more positive questions. Um, positively framed questions um, that I'm going to give you a, a chance to think about a little bit. Um, one of these uh, is uh, how can you take better care of yourself in 2023? And this is something you can think about. Um, you know, it was written in the context of workplace reflection, but you can absolutely think about it in any context. Um, how can you better take care of yourself in your personal life, at work, in, you know, uh, with your family, with your friends, you know, whatever ends up, you know, kind of coming to mind for you. Um, and then the next one, which I will definitely um, not <laughs> be forcing anyone to share is this question, do you feel professionally supported? And the way that we're kind of taking that and making sure that the framing is positive is, if not, how can you get that support? So thinking about these two things that, that are really more about planning ahead and moving forward into 2023, um, I am gonna give you this time, let's say about four minutes and I'm really doing it this time. I'm really setting, uh, setting my timer, four minutes, pausing the recording and here we go. I did that wrong too. Our, our last reflective prompts. So these are from uh, Tony Gay. And if you have been to any of my reflective practice sessions, um, I talk about Tony Gay and a particular book 
um, by Tony Gay, which is called, I just had, had it pulled up and then I, I left it behind. Okay, it's called Teaching and Learning Through Reflective Practice, a guide, a practical guide for positive action. And so I specifically went to that um, text for this particular session because I was thinking about that positive framing. Um, but he does a ton of work um, on uh, reflective practice, particularly in a healthcare setting, like health, um, uh, why am I out like various allied health sciences kind of work. Um, and he has also done some work about teaching. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff out there by this author about reflection. Um, but I picked a couple of these questions from that text I just mentioned, and I do have my references listed at the end of this, like a, like a good library person. Um, so if you are interested in that, it is something that we have as an unlimited ebook. Um, unlimited user ebook. So it's available to look more into. But this is just a sample of that. And uh, Gay talks about using positive questions to create a text, a reflective text that you are sort of uh, adding to as you're thinking about some of these prompts. So three here, what was happening when you found yourself thinking that worked really well? This, the, that particular question is one I actually just on a personal level go back to a lot when I am trying to uh, sort of push back against that negativity bias. So I should really have, have thought about that um, in the context maybe of that class that I gave as an example earlier. So what something that worked really well in there was an activity we had done before some of the confusion happened. Um, what did someone say or do to make you feel that your professional experience was greatly appreciated? This is something I think we could probably all benefit from thinking about right now because morale um, is pretty low across campus in my estimation. Um, and I think it is, uh, again, we're not, not trying to create a false sense of positivity here or anything toxic. Uh, but it is sometimes, it is important sometimes to think back and say, you know, a lot of times I'm not feeling very valued or appreciated. What are some times when I was feeling that way and, and what made that happen? And then finally, what did you do that prompted a colleague to say, thank you, that was very helpful. So these are three, again, you can feel free to try to think through all three of them. You can focus on one um, and let me check the time. Yeah, we're gonna, get, we're gonna do five minutes again. Um, and I'm going to pause the recording. Zooming the recording, just saying thank you to all of you. I appreciate all of you for joining me today. Um, when I do these sessions, it, it makes me carve out time to reflect. Um, and that's something that's really, important to me and that I really value as a professional, but um, you know, one of the biggest barriers that people report uh, that keeps them from doing reflective practice is time. And I think we probably all can understand that. So um, I always appreciate being able to make these opportunities for myself and for my colleagues. Um, I will tell you that there have been a couple of people in the past after I've done these who have just kind of emailed me out of the blue and said, hey, uh, can you send me some reflection prompts? Um, if you are ever interested, I would be delighted to send you some of the prompts I have collected over my reflective practice travels. If you are looking to do a little bit of reflection, um, please feel free to email me anytime. If you have questions, also email me. Um, these slides will be up on the ULVLC uh, LibGuide, and they include my references, including, like I said, that ebook that we have. Um, teaching and learning through reflective practice uh, that I find really inspirational um, as I am looking for, you know, diff looking at different potential ways to reflect um, on my work. So thank you all again so much for coming. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now.